Good afternoon and welcome to the 60th annual Gerstecker Teacher Award Program. My name is Viola Collin and I'm the president of the Midland City Education Association representing the teaching and special services staff of Midland Public Schools. I am pleased to co-sponsor this event with the Midland Public Schools Board of Education. This program is one of the highlights of our school year, a time to honor our retiring staff, recognizing years of service our staff has dedicated to the students in our community, and to applaud four of our finest educators as winners of the Gerstecker Teacher Proficiency Award. This is a landmark year for this program, and I am so proud and humbled to have been part of it for the past 10 of its 60 wonderful years in existence. The quality of our educational program at Midland Public Schools is exemplary. The legacy of excellence is not only rooted in the quality of our educators, but ultimately in the success of our students. All of us are reminded of this from the sheer success of our graduating seniors. It is no surprise that a large majority of our students go on to succeed in furthering their education in vocational studies and at many of our local colleges and universities. Last Saturday, I had the privilege of attending my niece's graduation ceremony at Michigan State University. Rebecca graduated with her bachelor's degree in journalism with a minor in graphic design. She won several awards while at MSU for her work on the state news. And while I sat sitting in the audience, I felt the most proud of the fact that she had carried on our family values of a strong work ethic and pursuing higher education into another generation, like a torch being handed off with the grace of an Olympian. I also felt great pride knowing that a quality public school program created her solid educational foundation. We have several other children in our family continuing in her footsteps and will graduate over the next few years. This dedication to education in my family and in many of your families is really why we are here today to honor the process of becoming educated by quality instructors in our areas of strength and interest. During MSU's commencement speech, the speaker focused on his entire family that contributed to his graduation. They helped him achieve his goal to graduate. And how his father had told him it was not a gift or handout, but an investment. I know many of our MPS students and audience members sitting here today have had a lot of family investors that have helped them to reach their educational goal. And it made me wonder, why are we so passionate about educating our children? Why do we sacrifice so much personally and financially as individuals and as a an community to ensure our children receive a quality education? And finally, what makes some of us answer the call to be educators? I believe it's because it offers us the best way to ensure that we leave a meaningful and lasting legacy of knowledge and economic stability to future generations. The Gerstecker Award is about honoring that legacy of high quality, dedicated teachers that instill the value of education in our students, passing the torch of knowledge from one generation to another. A legacy that now spans the length of 60 years. Like the unwavering dedication of our educators, this program has been one of the things we can count on. One of the things that reminds us of the outstanding performance our staff and students deliver on a daily basis. In the larger context, education is an integral part of our economy in this nation and globally. It creates jobs. 
However, we all know that education does more than help our economy. The primary purpose of our education is to expand our knowledge to reach our full potential and to use that knowledge to give back to improve our world one community at a time. The importance of investing in, edu in, in education can easily be forgotten. Unfortunately, in public education, we are seeing a decline in this investment, and that has put a larger burden on our local district and our Midland community. Fortunately for all of us, we live in a community that supports education as a core value. Our community has repeatedly stood up and provided our schools with additional revenue to help our district maintain our quality of excellence. This continued support was demonstrated this, demonstrated this spring when our community once again decided to support us with our spring bond issue. They decided to be key investors in education and we thank them. Ultimately, I believe our legacy in Midland is similar to what the wise father told our commencement speaker last Saturday. The cost of educating our students should only be viewed as an investment that will pay out more dividends than we can ever put a price tag on. Shortly, you will hear some stories. They're a perfect example of how outstanding educators continue to help our students reach their full potential. I hope our winners can appreciate their accomplishments and this recognition, and most of all, appreciate how their legacy of service will live on in the children they have taught. Speaking of legacy and service, I ask you to take a moment to consider the first, the list of names in the program where we celebrate previous Gerstack winners, dating back to when the Gerstacker family established this award 60 years ago in 1956. On this list are some of the finest professionals to ever grace this community with their passion for teaching. I wish to thank the Gerstacker family for their ongoing support of our schools and many other projects in our community. During this first portion of our program this afternoon, we honor years of service in public education. These years of service may be in Midland Public Schools, in other districts in our state, or around the nation. They may also be as a teacher, a counselor, a therapist, or an administrator. Each of the individuals I'm about to acknowledge will receive a certificate and a pin from the Midland City Education Association indicating their years of service. This recognition will take place at many of our end of the year programs at individual buildings. I would like to ask each of these individuals to stand as I recognize them. Please hold your applause until each group is standing. If you are celebrating your 25 years of service in public education, would you please stand? I'm standing, you might not be able to tell, but <laughs> I am standing. If you are celebrating 30 years, would you please stand? <laughs> if you are celebrating 35 years in education, would you please stand? Thank you and congratulations. And now for the retiree segment of our program, ladies and gentlemen, I give you the Midland Public School Superintendent, Mr. Michael Sherrill. First of all, I think it's important we recognize that we have Lisa Gerstacker with us today, so thank you very much, Lisa. And thank you to the Gerstacker family for their support through the years and for sponsoring these awards, so celebrating Midland Public Schools teachers. As I think everyone knows, in my early days, I spent a lot of time in my father's service station pumping gas and changing oil. I also spent a lot of time on the baseball field 
usually behind the plate. So today I'd like to get, use a little bit of baseball analogy when I um, speak about education and teachers. With that in mind, some words of wisdom from great, some great baseball stars. Kurt Schilling, a pitcher who played for the Phillies, Red Sox, Diamondbacks, Astros, and Oreos from 1988 to 2007, once said, baseball is not a sport you can achieve individually. Talk about someone who got to see teamwork in action from many different baseball organizations. As we gather today to celebrate education in the 2015 Gerstacker Teacher Proficiency Awards, I can honestly say that successful education of a child is also not achieved individually, but through many educators working together as a team. Lawrence Stobie, who played for the Indians, White Sox, and Tigers from 1947 through 59, once said, kids are our future, and we hope baseball has given them some idea what it is to live together and how we can get along. Kind of like baseball, we know education today is more than teaching the core subjects. We know it involves teaching students about communication, management, leadership, accomplishing goals, and working together as a team. Johnny Bench, who was a star catcher for the Cincinnati Reds, once said, that's the remarkable thing about baseball. The game has a way of having you scratch your head one minute and drive you crazy the next. You're, en you're enter entertained beyond your wildest hopes. That is why it's the best game. I couldn't have expressed education in a sense or two, sense or two any better. When we think of the thousands and thousands of students we as educators touch throughout our careers, Johnny Bench summed it up so well. At times our students make us scratch our head, drive us crazy, and entertain us beyond our wildest beliefs. But through all this, we have one common goal, and that is their success. Please allow me to close with a quote from my favorite baseball manager, Detroit Tiger manager Sparky Anderson. Baseball is a simple game. If you have good players, and if you keep them in the right frame of mind, then the manager is success. As superintendent of Midland Public Schools, thank you to our 845 MPS staff members for your dedication, leadership, hard work, positive attitude, and flexibility. Each and every day, we work together as a dedicated, talented team for success <coughs> for more than 7,700 students on their journey to realize their educational and career goals. Thank you and best wishes to our retires this evening for sharing their 437 combined years of experience. Certainly our students and families will miss that experience. Now the retirees. I want to call your name if you would um, come on up to the stage. Our first retiree is Susan Backey. Susan is retiring from her fifth grade teaching position with Seabird Elementary at the end of the school year. Susan joined MPS in 1978 as a fourth grade teacher at Seabird. In addition to teaching at Seabird, Ms. Backey has taught at Mapleton and Parkdale, but the vast majority of her MPS teaching career has been spent educating upper elementary students at Seabird Elementary School. Once again, Susan Backey. Jeff Beckwith. <laughs> Jeff was on this stage last year, but it was for a different reason. Jeff, Jeff was a secondary educa educator Gerstecker recipient for the 2014 school year. Jeff began his MPS career in 2000 as a fifth grade teacher at Mills Elementary School. Mr. Beckworth also taught fifth grade at Seabird. In 2007, Mr. Beckworth joined the Central Middle School staff as a math and science teacher, and in 2008, moved to Jefferson as a math and language arts teacher, where he continues to teach today. In addition to his classroom teaching, Mr. Beckworth has been a safety patrol advisor and a yearbook advisor. Before coming to MPS, Jeff was a systems engineer in the United States Air Force and private industry. Mr. Beckworth.
Sandra Collinson. <clears throat> Sandra began her MPS career in 1977 as a social studies teacher at Jefferson Intermediate School. Sandra's entire MPS career has been spent working with Jefferson students teaching social studies, geography, and theater. In addition, she's a head-to-head -head coach, is the creator of the Jefferson Peace Garden, and is a teacher leader. Sandra was secondary educator recipient of the Gerstacker Proficiency Awards in 2006. Congratulations, Sandra. Sally Fine. Sally joined the MPS team in 1992 as a kindergarten teacher at Chippewasi Elementary School. Ms. Fine also taught at East Lawn for a number of years before returning to Chippewasi in 2000 to teach first grade. Ms. Fine was the student council advisor at the Chippewasi for several years. From 2010 through the present, Sally is a member of the Plymouth Elementary staff as a second grade teacher. Carol Lewin. <laughs> Carol began her MPS career at Midland High School in 1979 in the art department. In the early 1980s, she split her time between both high schools, and then in the late 1980s, her entire schedule was at H.H. Dow High School, where her art instruction career continues today. Carol was awarded a Gerstacker Proficiency Award in 1997 as a secondary educator. Thank you also, Carol, for designing the program. Cover artwork for this afternoon's Gerstacker Awards. It is beautiful. Yeah. Cheryl Marks. Cheryl joined MPS staff in 1979 at Chippewasi Elementary as a sixth grade teacher. In 1986, she joined the Seabird staff as a fifth grade teacher, the teaching position in which she continues today. Cheryl was a safety patrol advisor at Seabird for a number of years. A very interesting fact, Cheryl and Susan Bake, who has also been honored for retire this evening, have job shared this fifth grade position at Seabird since 1986. <laughs> Joanne Pobosik. <laughs> Joanne began her MPS career in 1995 as a third grade teacher. In the early 2000s, Joanne moved into the fifth grade teaching position, and in 2010, moved into her current position as a fourth grade teacher. Joanne's entire MPS teaching career has been spent working with upper elementary students at Woodcrest Elementary School. Congratulations, Joanne. <laughs> Mary Smith. Mary's MPS career began in 1983 at Chestnut Hill Elementary as a fifth grade teacher. She taught at Ashman School in Longview Elementary for a couple of years and returned to Chestnut Hill Elementary in 1988 teaching fifth grade where she remains today as a, as a teacher of the fourth grade students. For a number of years, Mary has been the safety patrol service, advise, service squad advisor at Chestnut Hill. Congratulations, Mary. <laughs> Gary Verlindi. <laughs> Gary's MPS career began as an English teacher in 1974 at Jefferson Intermediate School. In 1983, he moved to the English department at H.H. Dow High School. In 1984, Mr. Verlindi was awarded the first Ernest R. Britton Midland County Teacher of the Humanities Chair. In 1986, Mr. Verlindi held the position of Administrative Assistant for Student Discipline, 
attendance, art, library, and staff supervision at Midland High. In 1990, Gary moved into the position of coordinator of instructional media. In 1994, Gary assumed the duties as principal of Central Intermediate School. In 2004, Gary began his time as Chestnut Hills principal, and in 2008, he moved into the position of director of human resources. In 2011, more responsibility was added to Gary's duties, and he assumed his current assignment of assistant superintendent of Midland Public Schools. Congratulations, Gary. Total years of service of all our retirees listed in today's program is 437 years. Congratulations. Thank you. You get to sit back down. <laughs> After all, they may be tired. And we'll turn it back over to Vi. The Gerstecker Award is widely recognized in our community as the most prestigious honor given to a professional educator. Our quality staff at Midland Public Schools only makes the selection and recognition of these outstanding individuals more difficult. Before we bring the winners up, I would like to thank several people who have made this program possible today. First, my fellow Gerstecker committee members. Ms. Angela Brandstant, Vice President of the Midland Public Schools Board of Education. Mr. Jeff Penix. Principal of Woodcrest Elementary. Previous Gerstacker winner, Ms. Marianne Lepaski from Adams. Thank you also to our arrangement committee. Moria Brady, Emily Hockmeyer, Jennifer Miller, and Mary Swanson. And the person who makes so much of this happen, scheduling our meetings and planning our activities at this facility and doing a variety of other things, Ms. Dawn Malthra. Gerstecker Committee Chair and Teacher at Dow High School. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you also to the Dow High Honors Orchestra and to their director, Ms. Amanda Toms. Also, you can clap, we can clap. <laughs> they sounded beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Also, Ms. Carol Lewin, Dow High School art teacher who created the beautiful cover of this program. And last but not least, a special thank you to our MCA office professional, Diana Bush, and also to Cindy Young, our MPS board secretary. They both went above and beyond this year to ensure this program's success. At this time, I turn the program over to fellow Gerstecker Committee member and Midland Public Schools Board of Education Vice President, Angela Brandstamp. All right, good afternoon. First, I would like to congratulate everyone who we just brought up here who is retiring this year. Thank you so much for your many years of teaching and mentoring the children in our community. As I was thinking about what I wanted to talk about today, I was advised to talk about something education related, which that's a pretty broad topic. So I'm sure it was actually a test by the teachers on the Gerstacker Committee to see if I could narrow my topic, organize my thoughts, make it interesting, and stick to the time allowed. 30 minutes, I think she said. <laughs> anyway, hopefully not quite that long. But I had speech class in eighth grade at Northeast, so hopefully I still remember some of what my teacher talked to me, or taught me. I am asked all the time, what inspired you to run for a seat on the Board of Education? Or what most people are really thinking is why are you so crazy to want to be on the Board of Education? So today, I would like to tell you the four reasons why I choose to serve on the Midland Public School Board of Education. First, I believe in education. Nelson Mandela said that education is the most powerful weapon 
which you can use to change the world. Education is our springboard to opportunity. My husband and I often say, anyone can take away your job, but no one can ever take away your education. My parents instilled in me how important education is, and I, in turn, am passing along that message to my children. However, it really does take a village to raise a child. My son taught me that lesson very early on when he told me over summer break after three-year-old preschool that even though he only knew how to write the B and the E, that his teacher, Miss Cindy, would teach him how to write the N when he went back to school in the fall. Therefore, we did not need to work on that over his <laughs> summer vacation. <laughs> My children have been blessed to have had excellent teachers to guide them in their education. According to the dictionary, education is not only defined as the process of giving or receiving systematic instruction, but also as an enlightening experience. I want to thank each teacher here today for not just providing systematic instruction, but also the enlightening experiences to make education come alive for our children. The second reason I choose to serve on the Board of Education is because I believe in volunteering. It is said that volunteering is the ultimate exercise in democracy. You vote in elections once a year, but when you volunteer, you vote every day about the kind of community you want to live in. I have done a lot of volunteering in the communities I have lived in, and most recently, in many capacities with the Midland Public Schools. What I have never done is coach one of my children's sports teams. <laughs> For any of you who know my children, they very much enjoy sports. This is a gift they get from their father. My one claim to sports fame in my house is my Northeast Trophy for most improved tennis player in seventh grade. <laughs> I grew up participating in music, first playing the viola and then switching to the flute. My kids have been blessed with many members of the Midland community who have given their time and talents to teach them and encourage them as they have grown up playing many sports. We each have a talent and I believe an obligation to share that talent with our community to help make it the kind of place we want to live. I choose to use my talent to serve on the school board. The third reason I choose to serve is because I believe in the public school system. Josh Shipp has said that every kid is one caring adult away from being a success story. I want to be part of a school system that is open to all children and not just children who come from households that can afford to pay private school tuition. I am a product of the public school system. Because I moved several times growing up, I attended three different public school districts in Michigan. I attended a Michigan public university for my undergraduate degree. My parents are a product of the public school system. My grandparents were products of the public school system. Yes, these are challenging times in public education, but that is one reason I serve on the board. I don't want to be the person who just complains. I want to be the person who says, yes, I am aware of that situation, and I know that we looked at all options before that decision was made. This current era we are in is not the first time public schools have faced tough times. My mom grew up in a district back in the 50s that had to close for a semester for desegregation. I can remember in first grade, parents having to drive their children to school because the millage didn't pass and busing was suspended. I can remember my parents making a decision on which community to live in one time when we were moving based on which district was having trouble passing a millage and therefore threatening to cut programs. One of my elementary schools had almost every K through third grade classroom in portable classrooms out behind the school building. Through all the challenges through the years, the one constant, though, has been the many teachers who have been called to this profession to inspire the next generation. Day in and day out, you work with students to bring them to the next level. You reach kids from all backgrounds. 
I thank you teachers for dedicating yourselves to teaching in the public school system. Each of your dedication has impacted hundreds and hundreds of students. The fourth and final reason I choose to serve on the school board is because I believe in the Midland Public Schools. One of my jobs as a board member is to serve as a cheerleader for our district. This is an easy task as we have so much to brag about. I am just amazed at every board meeting by the incredible opportunities we have for our students in our district. I'm amazed by the teachers who lead these activities to inspire our students in so many ways. I attended Midland Public Schools from fifth through eighth grades. My mother worked for the Midland Public Schools. I'm a graduate of Adams Elementary. I was on the very first Adams Elementary Battle of the Books team. One of my very first leadership roles was as the captain of the Adams School Safety Patrol. And one of my favorite memories was playing dodgeball once a week when my sixth grade teacher, Mr. D, also a Gerdstacker recipient, led gym class. Now how awesome is that? My two years at Northeast were probably two of the most important years I spent in K through 12 education. One afternoon, I walked into my seventh grade math class and saw my name posted on the board because I had qualified for Delta math. This was the first time I realized that I was good in math. Thank you to my seventh grade math teacher for inspiring me. What began in seventh grade as a spark turned into undergraduate and graduate degrees in engineering. As teachers, you touch so many children in so many different ways. You probably do not even realize what an impact you have made on so many children with what you say and what you do, because most of us never take the time to thank you. So today, I want to say thank you for all the little things that you do that are really big things to our children. This year, it has been a privilege to serve as the board representative for the Gerstacker Committee. I wish everyone could have had the opportunity to read the unbelievable number of letters we received telling us stories of how so many of you have touched students' lives in numerous ways. It was a difficult task to narrow down the nominations to just four teachers to honor this year. I hope that the students, the parents, and, the co and your coworkers who took the time to write these nomination letters will also take the time to tell you themselves what an impact you have made. Although our decision was very difficult, I am so excited by this year's recipients. It has been very hard to keep this information under wraps for the last few weeks. And so I think it's time to find out who will receive the award this year. Thank you. I forgot I have the next part in order to go on with the awards. I would like to invite Pam Castle up here, please. So thank you. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen of the Midland Board of Education, the Midland Education Association, our NPS retirees, Gerstack Award recipients, and the families and colleagues of all of our winners. A special thank you to the Gerstacker family for your continued recognition and appreciation of the outstanding educators that we're celebrating today. I'm honored to represent H.H. Dow High School in presenting this esteemed award for excellence in teaching. So some of the words best associated with the teacher are master, guide, mentor, guru, counselor, and one that fits today's recipient especially well, Don. Our winner today is certainly all of these and always a professional while at the same time tiptoeing on the edge of insanity. <laughs> This person is highly regarded member of the Dow High ranks 
He's well respected throughout all of Midland Public Schools for his accomplishments in many buildings over the course of his tenure. He's truly a great educator who has weathered the pendulum of change in education. He always navigates the turbulence with humor and craziness, creating high expectations by building strong relationships with fellow staff members and students. Our quick-witted recipient is never without a sly grin, funny comment, or a well-placed editorial remark. He challenges his students to think deeper and tests his colleagues' resolve to be better at their craft. He's a talented wordsmith that can intellectually comment on almost everything related to global, political, or educational events. He's been a mentor to many current teachers and has paved the way for their success as well as for their students' successes. He has instilled this passion in so many that they've entered our profession as educators. Remarkably, while doing all these things, this unique character still finds time for others. In addition to being a dedicated educator, this person serves in many other capacities. A professional musician, a 1975 graduate of Midland High School, where he was freshman class president, senior class president, and co-editor of the school newspaper. A graduate of the University of Michigan and Central Michigan University. A music critic for the, critic for the campus newspaper at U of M, the Michigan Daily. Began his teaching career at MPS in August 1988. He's taught at both H.H. Dow and Jefferson while at Midland Public Schools. Currently our winner is Advisor of International Affairs, Philosophy Club, FGL, and is our Camp Outlook Selection Committee Chair. Perhaps his most successful extracurricular endeavor is comedy. <laughs> Many of his outfits have cast doubt on his ability to ever be embarrassed due to what could only be categorized as simply outrageous. <laughs> I'm told he once dressed up as a woman, a woman for a particular homecoming spirit day and his attire was so revealing that his wife made him change immediately. <laughs> We're very thankful to her for that. I, I would find it very difficult uh, to send one of my best teachers home for the violation of the Dow High dress code. <laughs> At our Dow Midland Assembly each year, this teacher causes the student section to erupt when he is wheeled out on a maintenance cart to give his predictions about the outcome of the game from his crystal bowling ball. I bet he couldn't predict this. <laughs> our Swami, make no mistake, there's only one. He's H.H. Dow Teacher of the Year, Rick Shaheen. to you a lot. You did lie to me a lot. Okay. I have a few more things that I want to share. Rick Shaheen pushes the envelope and in doing so helps his students push the boundaries of their thinking. He challenges them to explore, to think about other perspectives, to strengthen their own, to imagine what possibilities could be realized if they saw the world through different lenses to think globally and build relationships that increase learning. Students respond accordingly and leave Dow High with the thirst for learning. They obtain occupations in service to others and graduate from college with a new appreciation of where they come from. One past student wrote, Mr. Shaheen was one of the best teachers I ever had. Instead of talking at me, narrating lists of dried up facts and figures, 
Mr. Shaheen went off the books with zeal, hilarity, and true interest. Mr. Shaheen possesses an inherent quality I don't think you can necessarily learn as a teacher. He embodies the perfect blend of teacher, comedian, support system, and buddy. A parent wrote, he convinces his students that they can be thinkers and inquirers and that their opinions matter. He shares with them multiple perspectives on topics they're studying. He challenges their thinking and teaches them how to be open-minded and reflective. He introduces them to the importance of asking questions, evaluating sources, and not settling for information found only in a textbook. Rick listens and is respectful of the ways in which different students learn. He enriches their lives and provides the perfect environment for teenagers to learn more about the world and consequently more about themselves. In his original application, I've been doing my homework, <laughs> to Midland Public Schools, Rick Shaheen's vision was evident. He wrote, I feel it is clear that teaching is my chosen profession. I have a vested interest in making sure that the Midland schools continue to be among the finest in the state. Because this is the district that gave me my education. I've been a part of Midland's past, now I would like to contribute to its future. So Mr. Shaheen, you have been instrumental in shaping the future of countless lives, and I'm honored on behalf of H.H. Dow High School to present to you this afternoon the Gerstacker Award for Excellence in Teaching. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Am I supposed to say something or go sit down? Um, apparently there was a significant amount of subterfuge used here today. Um, thank God that my parents encouraged education that I married a phenomenal educator who taught me the craft of teaching, not just to show up. <laughs> and thank God for children who have given me perspective on how to move forward in this craft and a supportive family that you have in front of you which led me here. And bluntly, I'm a teacher that just stands among the giants of my colleagues who support it every day. I'm just an example of the excellence of public education today and the people that I get to share that experience with every day. So thank you for this, but thank you for sending me the children to work with every day and the colleagues who pick me up, put me on the path, and make sure that I'm at my best every day. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to work the crowd. Okay, I'm going to kiss everybody. <laughs> Shannon Blazy up here. Good afternoon. I have a, um, the wonderful privilege of introducing our next Gerstacker winner. And um, with a little support and motivation from a, a little known book or a wide known book from elementary teachers, it's called The Important Book and I directly stole a line from it, I admit. Um, the important thing about you is that you are you. It is, a, it is true that you were a baby and you grew, and then you were a child who grew into a woman. But the important thing about you is that you are you. The important thing about her is that she is a passionate teacher. 
It is true that our Gerstacker winner is so passionate about teaching. She kneels beside her students, shares the essential building blocks, and is committed to every moment with her students. The important thing about our Gerstacker winner is that she is a passionate teacher. The important thing about our Gerstacker winner is that she is loving and caring, a loving mother of a family of five, a loving teacher of many, many more. The important thing about our Gerstacker winner is that you are loving and caring. The important thing about our Gerstacker winner is that she is humble. It is true that she works tirelessly, teaching students and teaching teachers the fine art of reading and writing, always giving and never boasting, or never asking anything in return. The important thing about our Gerstacker winner is that she is humble. The important thing about our Gerstacker winner is that she never gives up. It is true that on any given night, including weekends, you might find her working in her classroom in the wee hours of the night. She is consistent and patient with little ones, and she makes great gains and strides with all of them. The important thing about our Gerstacker winner is that she never gives up. The important thing about our Gerstacker winner is that she used to work at Woodcrest where she met her best friend and the love of her life. It is true that she mistook his quiet handsomeness for arrogance, <laughs> but she looked deeper and found her life partner. The important thing about our Gerstacker winner is that you are you. The important thing about our Gerstacker winner is that you are Trisha Clancy. humble up here. Um, when I looked at the back of the program and saw all the past winners, um, I, I can't see my name among those. Um, when I think back to Hillary Ferguson and Judy Zach and all the things they brought to this district, um, it's hard to think that I could, I could be among them. When I think about my husband who gets up at 5 in the morning and is still answering emails late into the evening, um, when I think about my friend who um, 
has almost 30 kids in her class, a third of which probably have, I think, have um, individualized education plans. And she never bats an eye. She just goes to work every day and does the job. Um, I could go on and on about my colleagues who are amazing. And so among them, I don't feel exceptional. I just feel like um, I'm given the opportunity to do what I love every day. Um, I love the little, the little ones. They give me um, passion and inspiration. They, um, they're a puzzle and a challenge. And just to give them um, the opportunity to um, have the, the, the world of literacy opened up to them, I really think is an honor to do that job every day. So um, I, I do want to thank, though, the, the Gerstecker family and Lisa, who is here today, for continuing this award because um, I think that all of us are doing this job every day because we know um, that in this country, the distance between the haves and the have-nots um, is getting bigger and that the great equalizer is education and that we are here because we believe in public education, as Angela stated so well, um, and that it's an important job. So um, I thank the Gerstackers, the Midland Public Schools, and MCA for continuing this award for 60 years um, to help inspire and encourage all of us to do the work that we know is so important. Um, and as a re representative of all, all the wonderful teachers in Midland Public Schools, I, I thank you for this award. And all my stuff. Oh, come on. I'll get them later. Where are the boys? Oh, thank you. That's a lot of gifts. Thank you. Next, I would like to invite Janet Greif up here. Good afternoon. I just want to say I think Trisha's speech is better than mine, and she did it right off the top of her head. Wow, it's kind of a hard act to follow. Just like that was very good. Literacy all the way. Okay. Good afternoon. This is such a special event, and I want to thank the Gerstacker family for their continued support of honoring our best and brightest teachers. One of the components of this presentation that is fun is trying to guess, you know, who is it? It's kind of the element of surprise. So I, of course, have constructed a quick little riddle called Name That Teacher to see if we can guess who Midland High's winner is today. And I think I'm going to ask Amy Hutchinson to come up and see if her knowledge of being at Midland High for 29 years, and actually a past Gerstacker winner, I just read that about you, um, will, enable, will enable her, long before I got here, will enable her to crack the code. So we're going to go pretty fast, Amy, with these clues. Okay. You can say one or two things, and we're going to move on. Okay, right. first picture, please, from my Vanna. Uh, close, uh, not good. Next, next clue. Um, what do we have here? Um, snacks. Uh, no. uh, chocolate chip cookies. Not, nope, uh, go on. Next clue. Uh, How about this, Amy? Uh, Disney. Uh, Disney World. Uh, Mickey Mouse. Uh, warmer, not that great. Um, fourth clue. How about eating in a restaurant? Mm -hmm. a, uh, a waiter. Uh, uh, nope. Go on. <laughs> Come on, on this one, I'm really, I'm pulling for you. Uh, Christmas. Um, uh, how about Santa Claus? Uh, not, another uh, name? Saint Nicholas. Uh, get a little bit warmer. Okay, so so far as Amy have it. Okay, I, I'm gonna, <laughs> Amy. Right now we got nothing. Amy, I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna help okay. you now because we're gonna give you the answers. I'm gonna give everybody the answers now. So we'll go, we'll go to the first clue again. Java. Not a cup of coffee. Java. Next clue. Cookies. Are we getting any warmer there? Next clue, mouse. I'm pulling for somebody here from Midland High. Not a waiter, but a server. Do we, can we connect the dots here? And this is actually the Nicholas Scholars, not St. Nicholas, Nicholas Scholars. And so, if you haven't figured it out. There it goes, what does the fox say? And if you haven't figured it out, who would it be? Bob Fox. Well, here we go, Bob Fox. You can stay there for a minute, Bob, because I'm going to read a quick, quick bio before we go on. 
After graduating from Midland High School in 2000, Mr. Fox went on to receive a bachelor's in science and education degree from Central Michigan University in 2004. And later he earned a master's degree in computer science and information systems from U of M in 2009. Mr. Fox teaches computer science and mathematics at Midland High. Under his leadership, the computer programming curriculum and course offerings have doubled in enrollment. His programming club has won or placed at competitions at SVSU, the annual engineering and computer science competition at U of M Dearborn, a program contest at Miami University in Ohio, and the National Council for Women in Technology Aspiration Awards. He has also taken students to compete at the American Computer Science League, which is by invitation only, and teams from around the world compete. Midland High has placed twice in second place to Romania, only being beaten by one point. Um, I will say that this Friday, the new team leaves for Orlando, and it's their goal, of course, to beat Romania this year. <laughs> Especially noteworthy was last year when he took students to Code Michigan, which was actually a competition for businesses, and the students came back and won two of the awards. Mr. Uh, Fox continues to challenge himself and his students and has been the advisor for the Nicholas Innovation Competition for the last two years. Bob mentored three teams this year, and I'm proud to report that Midland High School took both second and third place, winning $15,000 towards future innovations at Midland High. He's impressive, and he provides his students with life-changing uh, knowledge and experience. Bob, some of your colleagues, you can stay put for a minute, some of your colleagues like to do a little bit of this is your life, so I'm going to invite Dom Demko to come up first. <laughs> Thanks, Janet. Um, 17 years ago, I had Bob Fox in one of my advanced level English classes, and he looked pretty much the same as he does right now. <laughs> and I remember it was one day, there was, um, I was passing back a bunch of essays, which is always like kind of a stressful time because they're getting back these essays and they're very anxious about their papers and everything else. And I gave all the kids their papers and uh, Bob came up to me toward the uh, end of the hour and he kind of pulled me aside and he said, Mr. Demko, I, I want to talk about my paper for a sec, is that okay? And I said, yeah, well, what is it? And he said, I think you made a mistake. <laughs> and I looked down and I said, really? And I said, what's the mistake, Bob? And I said, well, he said, well, I, I used the word it's there in the proper context and you marked it wrong. And so I looked down and sure enough, he was right. <laughs> and I was wrong. And I looked up and I said, tell you what. I'll give an extra point and we'll call it even. Is that fair? And he looked at me and he smiled and he said, yeah, that's fair. <laughs> and you know, when I had the opportunity to, you know, to come up here and say something about Bob today, I was, uh, I was thinking about what I would say, and I thought of that. And anybody who works with me knows that I make about 87 mistakes a day. So why would I remember a mistake from 17 years ago? And the reason was is because I think most of the time in my classes when I make a mistake, the kids hold banners up, you goofed. And yet, Bob kind of went out of his way to not only kind of make it okay for me, but to actually show me that, you know, it doesn't really matter. I just wanted to ask you about something. And with that kind of compassion, and with that kind of character, and with that kind of integrity as a 15-year-old kid in my class, I'm not surprised at all that that same character, that same integrity, and that same caring is passed along to all of his kids today as a teacher. And I, Bob, these kids come into my classroom and they just love you. And you have meant the world to them. And I guess what I want to say is that I was so proud of you 17 years ago, and I'm still so proud of you. And. And I know that you're way too modest to ever believe that you deserve this award, but I'm here to tell you with all the rest of us that you deserve this award. <laughs> Next up, Kendall Root's going to tell us about the college years. <laughs> 
Yeah, so... <laughs> it's the year, uh, what was it? I guess about the year 2000. Uh, I came back to attend CMU uh, as a non-traditional student. I'd been in the, on the West Coast in the Navy. So I got there and I knew nobody. Um, in very first class, the fall of our freshman year, uh, discrete math, Bob was in there with Arnie Hamill and uh, we were learning discrete math from Dr. Hamill. Uh, the next semester, intro to philosophy and Bob was in there again. Um, and uh, you know, for me, not knowing anybody, he kind of just sort of separated himself from the other students in our class. There was something about him that was different. Um, he was like smart. Uh, <laughs> Uh, and by that I mean he excelled. He did very well. He had a, he had a true commitment to excellence. And, uh, and that quality that I saw him uh, those years ago at CMU, that still holds true today. Uh, one of the reasons he's deserving of this award is he's constantly self-critiquing. He's tweaking what he does in his classroom. He's honing his craft. And that commitment to excellence that I saw back then is still present now, which is one reason why he's very, very deserving of this award. And for the next chapter, Mr. Jeff Yoder. Uh, unlike Don, I did not have Bob in my class, but I saw him going by my class all the time as I was in the band hallway. And then he wasn't there for a while. And then I saw him again. I said, like, what is this kid doing back? Because you know, time kind of runs away from you after a while. <laughs> well, this kid was teaching math classes and programming. And so I see this young face. I'm like, OK, that's when I start to feel old. But more importantly than seeing, Don, than seeing Bob there, what I primarily was, I, I heard from my students about Mr. Fox. Hey, Mr. Fox did this. Hey, Mr. Fox told me that. Hey, I did this. And to constantly hear this enthusiasm that these kids had for, well, OK, computer programming. <laughs> Let, let's face it. This is not exactly high drama here. But the enthusiasm that these kids came to me with about Mr. Fox, what they did in their programming, this is so cool, they couldn't stop talking about it. And that's what stands out for me for Bob is the enthusiasm that he brings to his class and that he just radiates to his students and that that just draws them in. And especially for me this year, my own daughter is in his class now. And the enthusiasm and how much fun she finds doing this. So Bob, that enthusiasm more than makes you worthy for this. Brendan, I think it's your turn. It's a great teacher who can challenge his students. It's the special teacher who can challenge his students and then they say, I want more. And that's what Bob does. He has students who bring him ideas for competitions and, and uh, they just they want to reach for those goals in his class and I'm constantly amazed by that for, from him. Um, he leads multiple teams to these competitions and he's going up against schools that struggle to field one team or many schools that don't even have a programming class and, uh, and he just does such amazing things and he never has to really promote the programming classes because the kids all want to promote it to each other. Some of the things beyond the classroom though that he does, uh, he really reaches students uh, when they go to college and, and they enter these introductory engineering classes and they sit there and they watch the other students in the class struggling so much, but they come back and they tell Bob how much the problem solving skills that he's taught them have helped them through these classes and how much they remember all that they got to do. He uses video game uh, design and robot applications and what's a better way to reach a teenage student. But beyond that, female students really tend to look at programming classes and say, I can't do that. There's this stereotype there. It's a male-dominated field. And he's been able to reach out to so many of our gifted female students and say, yes, you can do this. And our female students are able to explore new careers that they never would have considered and, and just see potential that they never would have realized that was there. Uh, Bob has accomplished all of these things throughout his career, and, and that's why I feel he's so deserving of this award today.
And Ben Yonkin's going to share some quotes from some of those students. I'm the last one. <laughs> so I'm here to talk about some of the words that I hear from the students about um, Mr. Fox and the impact they have on he has on their life. Um, things that the students have said include, I am blessed with Mr. Fox's willingness to help me in all sorts of academic and personal challenges. He is extremely helpful and very patient helping all of his students. He challenges students to solve problems independently. He knows exactly what to say based on their particular skill level to help them learn the subject at hand. His commitment is incredible. He stays after school for two hours every Tuesday and every Thursday to host extracurricular clubs. His excitement and extensive knowledge of the subject, as well as his uncanny ability to clearly articulate difficult concepts. And Mr. Fox's evident love for his children, his wife, his job, and his students help us all at Midland High feel what it is like to be a comic. And all those are great, but this last one really you know, stuck out to me as, as a, why Mr. Fox deserves this award. Uh, the students went on to say, I once had the privilege of receiving a recommendation from Mr. Fox. One thing that really struck me was how he closed the letter by saying that he would be proud of his daughter grew up to be something like me. Now I can say the favor, or now I can return the favor and say that Mr. Fox has become a sort of father figure for me during my time at Midland High, and I can say with full confidence that no one deserves this award more than him. Please join me in welcoming Bob Hall. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. I do not remember that story. <laughs> wow. I'm I'm rarely at a loss for words, but I think that I think now might qualify for that. You know, I'll keep this real short. I, you know, I get to go to work and do what I love every single day. And, uh, you know, Janet mentioned all the, all the awards that the kids win and stuff. And I love winning. I'm very competitive. And <laughs> if you've had me as a teacher, you know that. Um, but, uh, but the thing is, when you, when you win those things, it feels good for a couple days and it, and it wears off. And, you know, as Janet sort of ran through that list, you know, what I thought about is the story that went with each kid. And, and I think we're really blessed as educators to have the opportunity to be part of those stories with kids. And I just, I think that's, that's just a really neat experience. And the fact that I can get paid to do that is, is pretty darn cool. So thank you very much. Thank you, dear. I've never gotten a bouquet of flowers before. <laughs> and for our last recipient this evening, I'd like to invite Bridget Hackemeyer to the podium. Thank you, Angela. Congratulations to our three recipients, wonderful choices. And thank you, Lisa, for not only representing your family, but for being here. You've been here the last few years. We do appreciate that. Let's get on to and reveal our final winner. Enthusiastic, passionate, kind, generous, visionary, all are words that describe this colleague. This person is intelligent, warm, energetic, whose enjoyment of children shines in everything he or she does. This person models and lives the PYP IB learner profiles and attitudes and uses the key concepts. Let's reflect and use these PYP concepts to guide us and learn more about this person. First, we must ask ourselves, key concept number one, its form. What is it like? Hmm, what is it like having this teacher in your building? Well, if you mention an idea in passing, this person starts creatively thinking how the idea connects to teaching, another activity in the building, or how to involve the community. 
This person never tires. Key concept number two, function. How does it work? Let's name this person she and ask ourselves, how does she work? She is committed. She believes in doing what is best for children. Because she is supportive of all, she immerses herself into extra activities and gives so much of her time. She is not afraid to seek outside resources or colleagues and ask for, and ask for their support on a, an idea that she wants to make happen. She believes in the power of teamwork. So I will follow her example and bring up another team member. Mr. Lauer, could you please join me and share how this person works? Absolutely. Let's talk about the key concept of connection. She embodies the key concept of connection. She connects with her students and colleagues and is always working to make connections with the outside world. She invites President Obama when the schools sing patriotic songs. <laughs> invites Melissa Gilbert after she has read the Little House series to students during several lunch periods and even asks Barry Manilow to join us in a song at a concert. <laughs> Very true. A community member wrote, she is a team player, respected by her peers and always committed to becoming an even better teacher. Another person said, she is generous, always willing to share her knowledge about children and teaching and give her time to make her buildings a better place. Let's add another key concept, causation. Why is it like this? We can change that to why is Barbara like this? Because she is caring, tolerant, and believes in all children. A colleague says she convinces her students that they can be musical artists as well as scientists and mathematicians. Barb sees the importance of guiding her students to be thinkers, explorers, um, and inquirers. She creates several learning centers in her music room where students are allowed to read, write, and learn about cultures and musical styles. How about change? Now there's one. How is it changing or how is she changing? Barbara is a thinker and always working to improve as a teacher. As one colleague stated, she has examined how she has taught in the past and looked closely as to how she can modify it to fit the PYP framework and make the learning more powerful for her students. She is changing the lives of students, making them community leaders as they participate in a true community leadership event at Midlands City, with Midland City Manager. She is showing support for our at-risk youth by making their day brighter and bringing music to the juvenile center. And she is showing the power of change by volunteering on the Cultural Awareness Committee of the Midland Area Community Foundation. Key concept number five. Reflection, how do we know? We know Barbara is an excellent recipient of the Gerstacker Award by all the lives she has touched in the world. Key concept number six, responsibility. What is our responsibility? Ask Barbara, she'll tell you, to love, mentor, and embrace young minds. Finally, let's bring one of Barbara Jacques' many young minds to stage to sing a song written by our Gerstacker winner, Ms. Jolie Wing. Please come forward.
of Barbara's youngest protégés. Barbara, would you please join us? and I were going to perform that, but we couldn't have done it. <laughs> we practiced. <laughs> Where'd she go? Where's Jolie? Oh, honey, that was so beautiful. Isn't she wonderful? So <laughs> well, um, I sure am thankful, and I'll be thankful tomorrow, and I've been thankful every day since I came here. Um, there, there's talk. There was, um, there's two memories that I have hold so strongly. One of them was um, when I graduated from Michigan State and I told my daughter Maggie that we did that together. And um, when I talked to my parents about that the, the um, I had the 40 many, many pages of job placement uh, openings from Michigan State, and I called my parents, and I told them that I had that. And my dad said, well, why don't you, why don't you bring it over and, uh, for dinner, and we'll have dinner and look it over. And, and so I went, and um, we sat down, and he said, you know, Barbie, the thing about this is that many of these jobs were filled by the time this went to print, and some aren't, some aren't open yet. And let, this is what my father truly would say, I'll tell you what let's do. And he said, I'll tell you where is a nice place to live. And he said, Midland, Michigan is a nice place to live. And what you should do is choose where you'd like to live your life and then make your life. And he'd been coming here for, he'd been coming here for years working in industry and knew. He called it the last our town, USA. And I came. And, um, I was so blessed. And then the next thing that happened was um, Larry Smith called me on the phone and, and he said, well, music teacher, how would you like to move to Midland? And I came and it's been my home and you've been my home. And I, I'm so thankful every day, grateful for everyone that I share the day with, the moments, the beautiful, beautiful people that are here. And um, I'm just, I can't tell you how eternally grateful. Every day, every child, every moment. Oh gosh, I just don't know how to tell you how thankful I am. So um, bless your hearts and, and thank you so much. I don't know what else to say. <laughs> kids are here, it's just amazing. Look at that, mom and dad. <laughs> The Hurleys are here. <laughs> what should I do? <laughs> no, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you so much. Well, that concludes the ceremony today, and we certainly want to thank all of our Warren or award winners and our retirees and we want to st thank the Gerstacker family again and Lisa thank you very much and if I was tweeting out a message right now I'd just say wow what a event so please join us uh, downstairs right downstairs not upstairs downstairs after as we release today thank you very much